Okay, so um, Georgian Pingbacks is my current project. Um, the basic idea behind the project is that I had um, hundreds, if not thousands, of newspaper articles, and I wanted to know who they were attributing that they had been printed from. So on each of these little newspaper articles, you can see this is the very top of the newspaper article, the very bottom, and sometimes they have an attribution here that says from the Times, sometimes they have an attribution up here that says from the foreign market, sometimes they don't have an attribution at all. Because you can see these are not the best photographs of these newspapers, uh, optical character recognition software does not work excellently. Um, sometimes it doesn't work at all, in fact, I'll show you another version of it to give you an idea of how badly it works. Um, and the idea was to get the crowd to help me sort of um, find out what these attributions were, or to transcribe this is what the computer thinks it says, which is nonsense. Um, transcribe it, use the attributions that other people had done, and make a essentially find and replace function so we could automatically retrieve what all these attributions were. Now, in order to set up this um, crowdsourcing platform, I needed a couple of things. I needed to have a front end that looked nice and was fairly intuitive. This is pretty intuitive. I had undergraduate students test it out and they all managed to do it. They had it in their coursework on time, but they managed this. Um, and I had to have it dump into some sort of data file that I could access easily, that would be useful for me in my analysis, but didn't require too many intermediary steps on a manual basis. I wanted everything to be really automatic. Because this project is me. I, except for when I can enslave my undergraduates, it's only me and I need to be able to do this in a seamless way. So, I developed a workflow that basically works like this. If you go to this website, um, PinX Hosting, uh, there's lots of X10 hosting rather, there's lots of other ones, but this allows you to create a website. You don't get your own domain name unless you pay for it, but you can get a subdomain. Um, and it lets you install a full version of WordPress. So not like WordPress.com, WordPress where you can add lots of plugins, themes, anything that you want. So that was really useful. Once you have WordPress up and running, and you get to your dashboard, there were a couple of different plugins that I used to make my system work. I used something called Contact Form 7, and Contact Form 7 basically allowed me to create that entry form that you saw. It was very customizable. I could have free text, I could have drop-down menus, checkboxes, ratio buttons. You can do this sort of which is a normal web form, but this was very customizable and it looked really nice. It was um, resizable on different devices, which in the age of tablets made it very convenient. And you can tell it where to email it to. I set up a separate email address just for this. And what to do when it's done. And I have this little bit of code that basically refreshes the page with a new record. So every time somebody submits an answer to me, a new one comes up and it can hopefully get lost in the rabbit hole and just keep tagging things for me over and over again. Now once you do that, you end up with a WordPress email for each one of these. And you'll see why it's this purple brown in a moment. But basically each of these different emails is an entry. Something that somebody sent you. So I am not about to go through all these emails and cut and paste. I'm not a masochist. So I use something called if then then that. And what it basically does is you sign up, it's a free service, and I'm going quickly, but we'll get to play later. It's a free service, and I said every time a new email comes in my inbox that has this subject heading, which I signed in the contact form, create a new row in a spreadsheet on Google Drive with that data. And so what it does is it creates, and I'll show you a better example of it. So this form, after somebody fills it in, You get a document like this, and it only has one or two things. But the document is pretty simple. Every line has the timestamp of when it arrived, and then the middle bit is the line from the email. Now, that's all 
all of these squished together because it doesn't like making it to a CSV format. So I have a little add-on, which is a CSV converter. I highlight that column once a week, a month, whenever I'm going to start doing my data. Say what the separator is. I could use commas because some of the transcriptions have commas in it and it would insane. So I use that little, I don't know what it's called, little sideways down. And when I do that, it separates out into, into nice tabular format. So all of this is automated except for that last step, which I just do whenever I want to download my data. So I was able to create a WordPress site that I thought was pretty snazzy looking. I didn't have to use somebody else's um, crowdsourcing platform. I was able to decide how I wanted to display my data. I was able to decide how I wanted to display my web form, how I want that web form organized into my spreadsheet, and it all works seamlessly on its own. So this was my idea for a crowdsourcing platform. So what I'm going to step you through now is to work in individual groups. So I only have passwords for four groups. So you may have to consolidate in a moment into smaller groups. But if you go to this website, which is cw16demo.x10host.com, you will get to the Collaboration Workshop Crowdsourcing Demo page. cw16demo.x10host.com. Now what I've done here is I've set up five different crowdsourcing sites. And I'll show you how it works thusly. So, if you go to my sample one, it asks you a very simple crowdsourcing question. What color shirt are they wearing? And what color is their hair? I was trying to think of non-offensive questions to use Don Bartholo's pictures from the SSI website. Now, how did I get that information in there? Well, I did not make individual uh, web pages by hand, that would have been madness. So if you look here, the XML file follows, instead I created some structured data. And this XML file, lots and lots of things are kept in XML, basically just has first name, last name, and then the name of the image file. And I use some regex to make this quickly. Once you have an XML file, and you go to your dashboard of this, and I'll give you a password in a moment, you use a program called All Import. And All Import, again, is a nice free plugin. And All Import has this lovely function where you install, you upload your XML file, and then you get this really simple little HTML or visual if you really need HTML, but HTML box. And all you do is you create your template, however you want to, and drag and drop the fields. And it automatically makes a single WordPress post for every single record in your database. So, what I will do for you after you do this, you basically just go, you save it, and then you run the import. When you run it, it goes through your whole XML database, and it deletes anything that has been removed from your database and adds new records and modifies any records. So if you're going along with your project and you have to remove a whole bunch of entries, just delete it from your XML, rerun the program, and it takes out all the bad records if you decide that you don't want those ones. They've, they've got enough hits already. So, there are two XML files and sets of um, data. I have the fellows pictures, and you can create a crowdsourcing about those pictures. I also have an XML file which is full of um, copyright-free NASA images, if you'd rather look at stars rather than fellows. So what I would like for you to do is if you go to this page and you go backslash WP admin, you should get a login page. A login page. And as a group, group one, group two, group three, group four, and they all have the same password, which is Battle Royale. And what we 
will do is I would like for you to edit your own HTML for your own particular crowdsourcing page, which is one, two, three, four, and create your own crowdsourcing page. What you'll need to do to do that is basically as follows. Manage your import, so you can decide what's on that left-hand side of the screen, the image, and the data you want to draw from that file. And then go to contact forms and edit your contact forms um, file. So in this case, if you're group four, you edit this. And at the moment, it's just asking what color shirt are they wearing and what color is their hair. You can change those questions to whatever you want. So if I could separate you, please, into group one here. Group two, sort of in the middle, group three in the back, and group four here. And I will bounce around, but I would like for you to please see if you can create your own crowdsourcing app using the data and the image pools that I've provided for you. And I will bring up those passwords again for you. No, no, that's right. Okay, so somebody just asked how do you get information about the form? If it doesn't already See, what I do basically is I create, when I make the title of the form, I put that metadata in the title. Because in Contact Form 7, you can add a little bit of code that basically says, take the title of the post and put that in the form as well. So you can know which one it came from, basically. This one isn't to tell me that, of course, but um, for my um, Georgia Pinkbacks project, it tells me which particular image it came from. We were just wondering how, how big your mailbox got as a result of all these emails, or... Um, it got pretty full. I had a couple thousand at one point, but it's Gmail, and it, it's, it's just text, so it doesn't really fill very quickly. Can you also get it to delete your email after the... Yes. It's a... Yeah. You can have the Google Mail filter it. The, if you don't want this much customizability, if you want to be really simple, you can always use Google Form, and Google Form will automatically populate a Google spreadsheet for you and you can do the pages like that. I like doing this because I can make it look exactly how I want it to look. Does anyone else have any trouble setting things up? Alright, so let's see how we ended up. So, yep.
so it wasn't that onerous for me. Anything else? Okay, well, please feel free to continue playing with it for the next few minutes. Do use the NASA data because the images are actually quite pretty. Not that we don't love our, our faces as well. Um, and in order to use the NASA data, instead of managing the imports, you actually upload a new file instead. So you would, if you want to use an entirely different XML, you would simply go to the XML import that you want to use, and you change the import settings. And at that point, you can upload a new file. The one thing I did forget to mention, I do apologize, is the one thing that the reason that you can have four different ones going on, and some of you may have noticed this, is under categories. I gave every single one of those posts category four. Um, people who visit your site will <coughs> see what tag it has, but it lets it so it only does category four posts within that random wheel, and you can have fun with the imports. That's fine. Thank you very much. I really hope that all of you take forward these ideas and that you actually try crowdsourcing because it really is extremely effective. Um, the example that I always use is the one that impressed me the most, which is the British Library's Maps project, which had an un unexpectedly high um, support from the crowd of the internet. And they were able to do in weeks what they thought would take months because people just want to donate five minutes of their time looking at maps and trying to pull the things over them. So please do consider it for all your data tagging needs. Thank you very much.